G'day everyone, today we're going to be taking a look at something different. Today I thought we'd take a look at some MS-DOS utilities. These are programs that were generally designed for a purpose, such as defragging your hard disk, transferring files, or just being a file manager. These are the programs that we've often forgotten about over time, but were essential for running a computer back in the day. There is a massive variety in this sort of software, so I can only really scratch the surface today. But I have selected some interesting pieces of software that I have for us to have a look at. First cab off the rank is Xtree Gold. This program is basically a file explorer and file manager that you can also use sort of as a quasi DOS shell. Uh, a lot of people would use it to select and run programs off their hard drives, but mostly it was for moving files around and managing them. Uh, in the background, you can see I, I do a little bit of file management, and in the process of exploring my Microbytes hard drive, I find this barcode printing software, which is um, interesting, but not very useful as I don't have a printer attached to this computer. Anyhow, one of the main reasons that programs like Xtree Gold exist is because MS-DOS did not have very good utilities for managing the files on your hard drive. That was until of course MS-DOS 4.01 came along with its version of DOS Shell. We'll be taking a look at the DOS Shell later on. Here I've got Laplink version 3 loaded on my PC. I use Laplink for transferring files between my old PCs and my more modern ones. Partly as a null modem serial cable is fairly easy to hook up between a more modern PC and an old one, but also to transfer files between old PCs as well. Whilst the serial connection is fairly slow, I think Laplink or other programs that transfer data by serial are some of the easier ways of transferring files between old computers and newer ones. Part of the reason is, is because old hard drives are not easy to hook up to a modern machine, and it's not terribly easy to hook up more modern hard drives to older machines. The other route that you could go is to set up networking on your old PCs. This can be a little bit tricky, but it is better if you're setting up a more permanent connection, where the Laplink and serial connections are quite good for something temporary. The next program here is called ColorDOS. It's not so much a utility as it is a whimsical addition to your MS-DOS life. It basically adds color to your MS-DOS prompt and to anything you do on the command line. So it's it's less of a utility and more just something to make your life a little bit prettier and nicer. Fortunately, it doesn't seem to consume too much conventional RAM. Up next is a program called DeskView. This one is a little bit unusual but it was extremely useful back in the day. It was essentially an extension to the DOS operating system, allowing you to run programs concurrently. Generally, this worked best with programs that only used text mode rather than graphics. But this wasn't as limiting as you might think, because most productivity software in the early days were text mode programs, such as Lotus 123. Eventually this changed, but DeskView had retained a niche in the form of bulletin board services. Essentially, the sysop or host could use DeskView to run more than one modem at a time, so you could have multiple sessions logged into the same computer. This was extremely useful for people who wanted to run multiple lines, but only had one computer. In the background here, I'm struggling to make DeskView do much of anything, but this is basically because I've had very little to no experience with it at all, but it certainly is quite interesting to play with. Back in the days of DOS, the main way that you caught viruses was to either execute an infected file or by passing around infected floppy disks. And so one of the ways that we had to handle this situation and hopefully remove viruses was to run programs like McAfee Associates here to remove them. Of course, without the internet, it was harder to keep your antivirus software up to date. Uh, so you would have to use something like a bulletin board service to download the latest virus definitions, if it was all possible for you. 
Forest scanners for MS DOS were maintained well after the end of life of DOS, partly because it was useful to scan a Windows 98 machine with a DOS program, basically because you could scan it without having Windows interfere and hopefully having the Windows viruses being deactivated. Of course this ended once Windows 98 became end of life, as the DOS component of Windows was removed and no longer usable. Without a nice user interface to tell you what's wrong, programs like Checkit were extremely important in the diagnosis of problems with your PC. It could perform some very basic diagnostics to find things such as problems with your memory, or perhaps your hard drive, but it was also very useful for when you were trying to set up a new device, such as a sound card. Checkit will tell you what IRQs are available and which DMA slots are available, so you can use that to work out what jumper settings to set on your card. Back in the day, we didn't have plug and play, so we had to do this manually, which meant you needed to know the configuration of the other devices in your computer so as to avoid a conflict. Check it, it also has some rudimentary benchmarks in it, but I would only use these for older machines as faster machines such as 486s and Pentiums have better benchmarks available to them. This next program called VPIC is particularly nostalgic for me. It's actually one of the very first programs we ever used on our old 386 back in the day. It's basically a file viewer for several different types of image formats, in particular GIF and Targa, with later versions of the software covering more formats. Anyhow, basically what we used to do was look at the images that came with our PC. Many of these images are actually pretty cool, and it's pretty impressive what they've managed to do with 16 color graphics. Some of the images have 8-bit graphics, or 256 colors, and VPIC does its best to display these if you've got it set to a 16 color graphics mode. Uh, it basically just picks the closest colors it can. Even though all of these GIF images are actually really quite small, you can see it still takes quite a while to load them onto the screen. It really puts the power of these old computers into perspective when you compare it to something more modern that would load these basically instantly. Also, it makes it very clear that the internet as we know it today certainly could not have run on an old 386. Typically, VPIC would be used to view images that have been downloaded from a bulletin board service. Because we didn't have a modem and no access to any bulletin board services, we were pretty much limited to the images that came on our computer. Lastly, let's take a look at the DOS shell, somewhat whimsically known by some people as the DOS hell. I'm not entirely sure if that's because people didn't like the program, or perhaps just because that's what the name looks like when you see it written out. The DOS shell is essentially a basic GUI which allowed you to perform some basic DOS functions, such as managing your files, running a program, or managing your program list. This was in direct competition with programs like Xtree Gold, which I think is part of the reason why they sort of disappeared after MS-DOS 4 came out. This version of the DOS shell even has a task swapper, so it would have even been able to compete a little bit with something like DeskView, although DeskView actually allows you to run the programs concurrently, whereas this one just allows you to switch tasks. The DOS shell is at least more cooperative with graphical programs, so that's a bonus. Something I found particularly useful was the ability of the file manager to view files in both ASCII and hexadecimal. It meant you could get a better look at what's in a file without having to load up a special editor. And back when I was a kid, there weren't really many very good editors. I think the version of DOS that we had came with Edlin, which was notoriously bad. Our older Twinhead 386 came with DOS 4.01, so it's the older version of the DOS shell that's most nostalgic for me. 
This was what we saw every time we turned on our computer. Being a kid and curious, I often played with features of programs like DOS Shell. And I remember vividly adding a uh, nonsense program to the program group and putting a password on it and promptly forgetting the password and having it stuck there basically forevermore. Poor dad was very unimpressed, but it didn't really do any serious harm. I realise I've barely scratched the surface when it comes to DOS utilities. I'd really like to hear what your favourite is, so please leave a comment below. That's it from me today. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.